Okay, we are here with NC State student athletes Michael O'Connell, Muhammad D. Ara, and Bent Middlebrooks. We have up to 20 minutes with the student athletes before head coach Kevin Keats. Please raise your hand to ask a question and someone, the microphone will come over. Please state your name and media affiliation. If you are joining on Zoom, please use the raise hand function for questions. We will address questions in the room first and get to Zoom if time allows. Okay, questions for student athletes. Left middle. Guys, uh, Will Graves, Associated Press. I guess this question's probably for Ben and maybe Mo. What is it like to have to guard DJ in practice? Ben, you want to start? Uh, I mean, I can definitely say it's, it's, uh, it comes with some challenges for sure. Uh, but I mean, I think at the end of the day, it definitely makes us better. I mean, I don't think there's another, another post presence uh, I mean, in the ACC, really in the country, that says as, as much of a force as him. So I think it really, honestly, has made us uh, part of the players that we are today, having to go against that every day. Mo, you want to add to that? It's easy. No, I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm playing. Uh, yeah, we, we compete against each other every day. And DJ is a tough guy. And like, we make for him complicated to get his spot. That's why he gets so well right now in, on, a, on a block. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't say all that. I mean, uh, but I mean, it, de yeah, it definitely, you definitely know if, if, if you're, if you're, if we're going at each other in practice, you're going to have a little soreness in your chest after having to take all the <laughs> post dribbles. But, but I, I don't know if I ever feel like I'm in trouble when I'm in there necessarily. Oh, same for me. <laughs> it's exactly the same thing. All right, questions for student athletes. Right aisle. Wonder, I'm Rob McLam with Inside Pack Sports. Just wondering if you guys, what in your study session so far, what have you seen from their zone defense, and what have you seen from them offensively? Mike, you want to start? Work your way down. Yeah, I think uh, from offensively, obviously, you've seen how they played against Kentucky. They're a very talented team. They can score from each level of the court. Obviously, they can shoot really well from three. They have a few guys that can really get it going, and they also have a very good post presence. So. Uh, just kind of today, and still watching film, game plan, and seeing how we're going to approach it and attack. Uh, for, from a defensive standpoint, it's going to be huge because if we let them get going, um, it, it's going to be tough to get the win. Mo? Uh, yeah, uh, we're going to play against some zone, like maybe 80, 98 time on the time, I bet. And uh, yeah, we're going to be prepared for this game, and we're going to be stay locked in and did what you do. Ben? Uh, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I, mean, I definitely got to agree with, with what they said. Uh, I mean, they're, they're a, a very solid team. I and mean, obviously, they just had a, a great game the other night. Uh, I mean, they do, they do run that zone, uh, which we we're going to have to be ready for. Uh, but I mean, I feel like if we do what we do and we keep on playing like we've been playing, we'll, we'll look good out there. Left middle. Brooke Pryor, ESPN. Michael, when you look at having to potentially guard a guy like Jack Golke, who just went off the other night, what are the challenges that come with guarding and preparing for a guy that gets on a hot streak? And what's it like to watch that film and kind of see the, all the attention that he's gotten nationally? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely impressive. He's obviously a very good player. It's not like he hasn't been doing this or making these shots all year. He's, he's just very talented. So uh, going into the game, I mean, we just got to same game plan is what the coaches think we got to do to take away obviously his looks and not let him get a clean looks if anything because he's going to get shots off like we said he's a great player and this is what he does um so trying to limit his touches limit his looks and that you know that area of the game will be huge for us and you know just try to force him to take tough ones and then finish possessing with rebounds left aisle thank you um jerry DePaulo, pittsburgh trip uh you guys uh maybe all three of you can answer this question this will be your seventh game in 12 days tomorrow night. How are you able to do it? Aren't you exhausted? And you've been, you haven't been home for it too much to, to settle down, have you? Ben, you want to start working your way down? Uh, I mean, absolutely. I mean, we definitely, I mean, I don't know about fatigue. <laughs> we've, we've been hearing about fatigue for, for a long time now. We've had, you said we have played a lot of games. I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't see any of my guys getting tired. I don't feel like we've, we've missed, lost a step at all. I mean, as far as, I mean, I definitely, I definitely do miss home a little bit, miss my dog a little bit, but uh, but uh, I mean, I'm, I'm still trying to win some more games. Mo? Oh, uh, yeah. We tired, but we got to compete. Like, we got to stay on top of what we got to do because we're here for that. And we got we can't complain about, like, we tired. Oh, we got to play, like, seven games in 
12 day. I don't know. But yeah, we're going to stay on top and do Yeah, I think, oh, sorry. Oh, At the end of the day, too, obviously we have a common goal in mind to keep playing, keep playing the game so in the season to finish the season with a win. So at this point, you know, even if your body's hurt or you're tired, you're not really focusing on it too much because you want to do everything you can to win that next game. Right middle. Nathan, he's USA Today. Michael, you guys have quite a few graduate players like yourself, quite a few guys coming in from different schools to make up this team. How much of this run is kind of the benefactor of so many different experiences coming together to know how to handle yourself in different situations? Yeah, I think I think it's been huge that we have a, a team full of mature guys, guys that have been here, whether it played in March before or they just just had experience playing through a lot of games where you know they're coming to the end where it's a one shot, one possession game and things like that. So I think just experience is always going to help you out down the stretch, especially when things aren't going your way. You can have guys that are able to rely on what they've been doing or what they've experienced in the past with either the other teams or this team they've been with for, with for a while. Um, just definitely helps keep everyone together and keep everyone on the same common goal. Questions for student athletes. Right aisle. For everyone, obviously, this has generated a lot of enthusiasm back home in Raleigh. Um, now it's starting to become national. I mean, your take on that? How surreal is it to see NC State? They're calling you guys America's team and things like that, and the love that you're receiving, both from Wolfpack Nation and now from the nation itself. Ben, you want to start? Uh, I mean, I would say. Especially, I mean, back home at Raleigh, I mean, that fan, the fans' appreciation back there definitely, I mean, means the world to us. I mean, we definitely feel that. I mean, when the crowd gets loud and starts cheering for us and we're away from home, I mean, there's not a better feeling than that. I mean, I know DJ Burns, when he gets the ball and the crowd just turns up for him, I and mean, there's nothing more fun than that, just seeing it. I mean, I know it's fun when it's on the court. And, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, hopefully, I mean, as far as America's team, I mean, I guess we'll try and keep that going. Mo? Yeah, we would really appreciate that because – we need that. We need that. Like we talk about, we tire, but when we got a, the chair, like scream for everybody, for for us, for DJ Burns, like we need. They, they give us energy, and we really appreciate it. Yeah, building off of what they said, I, I think it's huge. Just since we're not on our home court right now, we have a lot of fans that are traveling, and then just other other fans that aren't NC State fans necessarily still cheering for us. So I think when you're at these neutral sites and you have fans, a fan base there for you and getting excited, it helps, you know, when you go on a run, helps, just helps you keep it going and then things aren't going well, they help get you back in the game. Left middle. Oakland was pretty clear last night that they don't want to be considered a Cinderella team, that they believe that they can beat anybody. <laughs> Do you guys feel like you're a Cinderella team and is tomorrow night's game almost a battle of would-be Cinderella teams that could make a run in this tournament? Mike, you want to take that? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of like what people have been asking us, too, is how we feel about being the underdog or lower seed in all the games. But we don't really focus on that because at the end of the day, like, we, we, we just focus on what we can control. And whoever the opponent is, we're just going to, you know, scout for them. So I don't necessarily know if we, you know, want to just be labeled as a Cinderella team. I think we just want to be labeled as a great team that goes out there and competes every day and, you know, gives it their all. Because at the end of the day, everyone in this tournament's great. I mean, the seeds can go flip back and forth. So... We don't really focus on the number of the seed or anything like that. We just focus on whoever we're playing and then just controlling what we can control. Back right. Uh, Luke Taylor, Full Court Press Podcast. What would you say the song that best describes DJ Burns is? Ben, you want to take that? Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't got nothing. No. This song All right, no, hey, Mo, this is on you, man. You got this one, Mo. <laughs> Um, I don't know. Uh, I would say Baby Tron, King of the Galaxy, I Ooh, think. That's a good one. He loved that song. I like it. <laughs> All right, any more questions? All right, back right. Uh, Gar uh, <coughs> excuse me, Gary Hahn with the Wolfpack Sports Network. Of all the challenges uh, that this team's faced in the last six games, what, what are you the most uh, proud of uh, as far as being able to, to overcome those challenges? Um, you got that. Yeah, I think, I think the biggest thing is just sticking together. Um, obviously, the season hasn't been perfect by any means. It's, you know, we, haven't, we didn't win every game and you know, blow out every team. It's like we've had some ups and downs. And I think at times we really could have easily just given in, kind of caved in to just what was going wrong and just embraced that lifestyle. But 
I think it was huge for us that we all kind of just banded together, and no matter what we were going through, we always stuck together and had each other's backs. And I think it's I think it's been showing on the court, at least you know through the AC tournament. Even when the odds were stacked against us, it didn't really matter. We didn't really care. We were going to go in and just you know fight with your brother, and that was kind of the biggest thing: is you want to have their back, and same way as you wanted them to have yours. So um, I think that's been huge for us going through that stretch, and even coming into this now, when you're playing new teams you never played before, is just rely on what you guys have been doing all year, and just making sure you have each other's backs out there. Yeah. During the regular season, the pack had some ups and downs <coughs> offensively. But you take a look at the last six games, all of a sudden NC State is uh, averaging 81 points. So if each of you would just give your uh, your take on uh, on what's happened. Ben, you want to start? Uh, for sure. I mean, I, I would say, I mean, I mean, it absolutely did have a, a, a season full of ups and downs and full of a lot of adversity. And it feels like, I mean, throughout the season, I mean, again, I feel like it's something that a lot of people don't really – Take into consideration, but we were, I mean, when we started out this season, we had, I mean, half of our team, more than half of our team was new guys who'd never played with each other, never been on the court with each other before. And I mean, that, that takes a long time to figure out. I mean, obviously we, we, we came out pretty hot, but I mean, we still had to kind of deal with those issues and things like that. And I feel like a, a big part of the ACC tournament was us kind of coming together, figuring those things out, kind of fixing mistakes and, and issues that, that we had had. Um, and really just kind of like, like Mike had said, come together. And I mean, I mean, when we, when we play like that and we're playing together and everything's clicking, I mean, we're a tough team to play with. You guys good? You want to add anything? You good? No. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we're good. I've got one more. Yeah, sure. <laughs> the, the mental and physical toughness <laughs> that you guys have, uh, have displayed over the last six games has been, been pretty incredible. Uh, what's, what's, that, uh, what's brought that sort of to a peak? Mike, Mike want to take that? Yeah, I think, I mean, I think just we know, you know, this is this is it, really. At the end of the day, when you lose, you go home. So you're kind of just, at the end of the day, you're going to go out there and give it your all. And even if things are tough, you know, you're a little banged up or body's not feeling great or you missed the last shot or anything like that, you're not going to focus too much on it because if, if you get caught up with what's going wrong, next thing you know, it can all be over. So I think just trying to focus on, you know, what we do have at hand and what the opportunity we have that's in front of us is kind of something that helps you just look past everything that's going wrong or all the tough times. Right aisle. Yeah, all the guys that are playing are transfers. And do you think that this season, particularly the back end, when you guys are starting to succeed, is sort of a testament to saying, OK, you need to be patient with this. Sometimes it's just not going to click in the beginning. you got a lot of new guys from different systems coming to a new place. And, and this thing needs time sometimes. Do you think this is a testament to that? You got it, Mike? Benny with, or Mo, you got it? Uh, yeah. I, like you said, we got a lot of transfer, and everybody come from different school. But we build the chemistry all year, so yeah, it take a little bit of time. But that's why right now we play so good because we know each other and we got back of each other. Any more questions for student athletes? All right, thank you.
this point, you're paid. We paid to be here. We'll get you NIL for you. <laughs> the one you have. That's right. No, ain't no question. I'm glad to have them. I see the familiar faces, man. These, I see. I know who we got. ESPN in the house. <laughs> All right, once again, please raise your hand to ask a question. Someone with a microphone will come over. Please state your name and media affiliation. If you're joining on Zoom, please use the raise hand function for questions. We will address questions in the room first and get to Zoom if time allows. Questions for Coach Keats. Brooke? Brooke Pryor with ESPN. Coach no, no introduction needed, Brooke. <laughs> What's the challenge in playing a guy like Jack Golke? I mean, obviously, all of Oakland gets really hot, but Golke specifically, how do you scheme up defense after a performance like that? You know, I was, um, I was in the locker room, and I could hear the cheering. And I will say this, I was completely wrong because I know Kentucky travels very well. And so I, I thought Kentucky was winning the game by a large margin because I kept hearing the cheering, I thought it was Kentucky fans. And um, so I got, I grabbed my phone and started looking up the score and, and obviously Oakland was winning. So when I got back, you know, last night, two, two thirty in the morning, I popped the game on, started my, you know, scouting for, to prepare to get ready for Oakland. And man, I, I don't know that I've seen a shooting performance like that you know, if I have, it's been a long time. I mean, and, and, and people are going to say, man, goodness, Kentucky didn't do a good job. And they were there. I mean, he made shots after shots after shots. Um, I just, we, we got to do a better job. How? You know, I don't know how that is because he, he can make shots. But there is so much more um, than the shots he made. It's a really complete team. And, you know, they got great inside, outside presence, well coached, do a good job. And, and, you know, I've told our guys, man, this is going to be as tough a game as you're going to play because they, they got an inside-out presence. They can make shots. They can score around the basket. And they're unique on the defensive end. And so, you know, it's a big, it's a really big challenge. It's going to be a tough game. Left aisle. Jerry DePaula, Pittsburgh trip coach. You, know, you guys will play seven games in 12 days tomorrow night on venues that you're not used to playing on. What – is the secret to your team not getting exhausted, and how do you how do you keep them engaged uh, for that long without falling over? You know, when you go to Chick Fil A, they never tell you what's in those um, those sandwiches, and it's really good. So I'm not going to give my secret away because, <laughs> no, we our guys are, you know, it's I'm amazed at them every game that we play, and all the credit goes to them. We, we spend a lot of time in the preseason and during the season working on our conditioning. As a matter of fact, we've also called ourselves one of the best condition teams in the country, if not the best. And it's really paid off for our guys mentally and physically. You know, the the um, the great thing about us is we've gotten stronger in every second half. And you know, I just think the the buy-in and the energy that we provide through our our program and our energy that we give on the on the bench, I think it really helps our guys in understanding what the opportunity is. And there's really no secret sauce. I just think our guys are in good shape and, and mentally believe that they should be playing in the game. Front right. Michael Perchik, ABC 11 out of Raleigh. Coach, I don't know if you saw any of the videos circulating on social media of NC State students packing uh, the bell tower after last night's game. What does that type of image mean to you, understanding the rich history of this program? Well, it means a lot. I mean, I, I love our I love our students. I mean, the, our students are the best, and we have a unique thing here at NC State. When you win a huge game, you know, we like that bell tower, and everybody meets at that bell tower. It was funny. I saw one video, and it was like, "When is that? When's the light coming on? When is the light coming?" On? I thought it was great, and you know, when we win, you know, it's it's not just about our basketball team. It's about our school, and it's about our students. I mean, we. You know, we've got, we're the only team that has, you know, three power five teams in the same area within 25 minutes of each other. And it's a lot of bragging rights going around there. And, you know, we've had a, a long history of great basketball. And just to see us playing that well and, and obviously providing that spark for our, our entire school and our student body who has, you know, been with us at games and screaming and yelling at those games, it means a lot. Like, I don't. You know, we don't just win as a basketball program. We win as a university. Questions for Coach? 
Back to Brooke. Kevin, you talked a couple days ago about just the number of bids that the ACC got or lack thereof. What kind of message does it send to the committee, each win that you have and each win that, that other conference teams have in this tournament? You know, the unfortunate thing is it doesn't really send a message. I mean, I hate it because, you know, we look at the magical run that we had last year from our, some of our teams, and I think we try to, you know, tap down on that a little bit this year going into Selection Sunday and it didn't work. Uh, I think as a, as a conference, we got to figure it out. Um, what, what, what really bothers me a little bit is that we put so much emphasis on the non-conference. So I, let's, break our, let's break down most of our team's non-conference. Let's say you play seven power five, and then you play four mid-majors or bye games, or let's say you know, you go six and five at power five versus, you know, um, mid-major teams, bye games. So that's 11 games. You can't tell me that that's, you know, mean, should mean more than playing 20 power five games in your league. And you got to go to home venues and away. So I think somehow we got to get out of putting more emphasis on the non-conference, because it, to me it appears that you can lose a bid in what you do in a non-conference opposed to how you finish. So let's use us, for example. You know, our non-conference was, was okay. We didn't really have a, the, the, the major win. But look how we finished when we went to our tournament. We won five games in a row against five good teams five days in a row. Now, if we didn't put so much emphasis on it, we would have been in the tournament no matter what because the way we finished our regular season and we didn't have that opportunity. It's, you know, think about this now. You got 10 great uh, programs and great coaches that are sitting at home that didn't get a chance to go to the NCAA, and that's just not really fair. Like the ACC is, um, you know, in my opinion, I'm very biased, is the number one conference in basketball, um, and we deserve more. Now, we have to do our part. If, it, if the non-conference is what it's about, then uh, as coaches, we got to win more games, or we all have to figure out the net. And you know, some people figured out the net, and we haven't. But I guess winning will solve a lot of problems. But I just think it's disappointing, because I would love to see more kids get an opportunity. You asked me a great question yesterday. I still, the other day, I still think that um, we should expand the tournament because it gives more kids opportunities. Like where everything's about our student athletes, if that is true, then I know people say, well, we're ruining the tournament. There's still gonna be upsets, you know, whether you expand it or not, but it's, the, it's been the same amount since it went from 64 to 68. When it went to 68, nothing happened. It's still a great event. So why can't we add some more to it? And I think that will really help because I always say this, uh, anytime you can help the student athletes get a chance to experience something that's always better for our sport. Back right. Uh, Gary Hahn with the Wolfpack Sports Network. Kevin, of all the uh, challenges that the Wolfpack teams had to uh, face the last uh, six games, what, what are you the proudest of in terms of being able to overcome those challenges? Well, I think the biggest thing I'm proud of is our guys was, were, was able to block out any distractions. You know, we, the way we finished our season, and it was really tough, we, we lost four games in a row. And it would have been easy for those guys to say, man, it's just not our, our season and pack it in. And, you know, uh, when we were winning those games at the ACC, we were also on spring break. And it was warm in D.C. And so our guys could have said, man, we lose. We can go home. We can go on spring break. I think, I think the mere fact that we were able to lock in, focus, uh, not worry about all the distractions and, and win those five games and then go into the NCAA with a lot of m momentum and, and obviously pull off this, it says a lot about the character of the guys that's in that locker room. Front right. Coach, it looks like you were playing through the bigs last night. Obviously, big games from Burns and Middlebrooks. Different team in Oakland. Have you had an opportunity to take a look and see what scheme uh, is going to probably be best to attack the uh, Golden Grizzlies? You know, Oakland's unique, and I think that's what makes them special. Um, you know, they've got shooters. They've got inside presence. You know, they've got post guys. They've got wings that can play. And so when you get a team like that, 
you got to do a good job of defending them. So we, I think we have to defend them at all five positions. They don't have a weakness in their positions. But also what makes them different is, you know, they play a matchup zone, and you're not, you're not used to seeing that all the time. And with one or two days of prep, it's always tough to have that. And so I, I think, you know, our, our preparation is sometimes you can go into a, a game and just prepare for one side, you know, offensively or, or, or on the other side of a defensively. Uh, what makes them tough is that, unfortunately, nobody played us a matchup zone the entire year. And so we have, you know, a day and a half, not even that, because you can't even really take the court like that to try to figure out how to be able to score the basketball. So, you know, offensively, we got to have a game plan, but we also got to have one defensively also. Right aisle. Yeah, Rob McGlam with Inside Pack Sports. Kevin, you have a, basically everybody that plays other than Breon is a transfer. And so that's going to – sometimes it's going to take time. If you look – I don't want to imply there will be more five games and five-day winners as time goes by. But do you think there'll be more teams in the coming years with the portal where in late February, early March, they start to find it and then go on a run as you guys have? Well, I do think I think it's going to take a little longer than people think. I want you to think about it. And I always concentrate on our league. Our league is so good that we lose a bulk of our, our players to the NBA. The guys who don't play end up transferring. And so most of our teams at the beginning of the year look different. So that's one of the reasons why, you know, sometimes our non-conference is not the best because we got so many new people. Uh, but to get back to your question, I do think that it takes a lot longer than people expect for transfers to come together. And you could see, you know, late January, February pushes where guys are good. Uh, my team last year, we were a little bit uh, advanced because we had a chance to take a foreign trip. We went to Bahamas and we got those 10 days of extra practices and we were able to play two games. And so that helped this group. We didn't have that, that, that group. We didn't have that with this group. And so a lot of times uh, it's going to take some time and it just depends on how many veterans you got back and what their role was when they were on that team previously. Right middle. USA today obviously you guys are still in this so it's a kind of a different situation for you but there's been a lot of chatter about the transfer portal being open right after selection Sunday uh, and you guys are gonna have to replace some of these guys that are helping you do this right now how do you kind of balance uh, looking at who's there how many guys do you kind of dedicate to that and what are your thoughts on when this is open yeah I man that's a that's a great question um, thank you for that because I, it, it's been a, as a guy who loves to recruit, it has been a major challenge to balance getting ready for a great Oakland team and then obviously trying to figure out, you know, who can we go after in the transfer portal. And I wish um, someone is listening that, you know, we would push those dates back or change the dates or stuff like that because it's not really, in my opinion, it's not fair to the teams who have earned the right to play in the NCAA or the NIT. And then, you know, some teams that are not playing, they have the complete advantage to be able to recruit and you don't. And so I wish they would, you know, completely look at that. And uh, if there was a way that they could, you know, tinker with that and change it a little bit, because, you know, one of the things I sent to my staff today, I'm so used to playing the next day. I forgot after we won the game last night, I thought we played today. I was like, we played five straight days. so. I consider this a day off, even though it's not a day off. And I sent my te my staff a text and said, hey, hey, if you guys need, let's get on the phone with some guys who are in the transfer portal so we can try to, you know, get ahead of some of these things. But it's a complete disadvantage that we're in. Right, Al. Yeah, you, and, uh, just a moment ago, you mentioned last year's team. I'm glad you did that because they're the ones that kind of lifted you up from where it was the year before. In do you feel like a sense of gratitude to like Terquavion, for example? He stuck it out, chose not to leave it in its worst place, and now you have this. Is this season sort of an extension of that decision and those guys of what they did last year? Well, absolutely. Um, momentum. You know, guys like Terquavion Smith, who, who I love, who, you know, committed to me when he was 15 years old and stuck around the program after we didn't have that great year. And... You know, to get a guy like Jock, uh, Jockel Joyner to come into the program and, 
you know, people forget how good those two guys were. We lost 34 points from those guys and a lot of leadership and everything else. But, you know, when we win a championship like we did this year, those guys were so important to us winning because they gave us momentum. And, you know, the guy like DJ Burns comes in and has a, you know, comes back as another year and Casey Morsell and we were able to add some to it. But the guys from the year before laid a great foundation to get us right back on track. Back right. Uh, Billy Witz with the New York Times. Uh, I have a couple of uh, kind of NIL uh, questions for you. Did, is there uh, with is there anything unique that uh, that um, your collective does? And I'm just wondering if you can ex you know that or or if it's just something uh, like where you're just copying best practices or uh, you know that's out there. And then also. How does it how does it work between say the football program and your program of figuring out kind of like you know there's only a fixed amount of money of like where it goes and some schools I know like Arizona where they're just separated but um, yeah can you I guess elaborate on those yeah, things yeah I, I, our collective one pack uh, does a tremendous job and here's why I say that um, we're not. I don't have a lot of contact with them like that. It's completely kind of separate of us, um, you know, probably because of NC State, probably because of the state of North Carolina. So I think every state has something different uh, in our situation. We don't have a lot of contact with them. But what I do love about them is our guys during the times when they're not, you know, in class or basketball-wise, they have those guys out in the community, the Boys and Girls Club. They have them at Children's Hospital. They have them doing a lot of great things. I think that kind of separates us from a lot of people. Now, not saying that other people don't do that, um, but they're very involved. As as far as the um, you know dividing the money, I don't really know how they work. Um, I just know at NC State um, we need – you know, our, our folks who are, you know, a, a mass collection of people to be able to provide money um, to help with our student athletes. And I'm a fan of NIL because, um, I, you know, I, I remember back in the day when, when, you know, kids were going to bed hungry and didn't have any money and, and they were selling their jerseys at the bookstore and they never capitalized on anything else. And so I am a fan of that. But, but I think our, 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 collect, our collective does a really good job of that part of it. I don't know how it's broke down. I wish I did. Uh, if I did, I would request. I, I like, I'd like to get $7 million if I could. It's a joke. Don't print that. I just want everybody to know that. But. Probably got time for a couple more front right. Uh, Coach, you said previously one of the differences between this year's team and last year's team is the depth. More guys you can count on to score and contribute. Last night, a good example with Ben Middlebrooks chipping in 21. Um, in a tournament like this in particular, where it's natural for these student athletes to have some nerves and maybe have an off night, how vital is that depth where it's not one guy having to carry the load game in, game out? Well, depth can be looked at it in a different way. Um, it's weird because uh, we built this team to have 10 guys that will be able to play, and now we're down to seven or eight that's really contributing. Last year, team had more numbers that played. But what's unique about this team is like last year, if Tequavion Smith or Jaquel Joyner didn't lead us, then it was going to be hard for us to win. You know, I think out of these, um, you know, six games that we played, you know, in the postseason, I think we at least five of them maybe we've had a different lead score, and that that's a good thing because it's hard to, you know, uh, focus in on one one guy. You know, Ben was great. He did a tremendous job last night, and what was so special about last night was. You know, as Ben was scoring, DJ Burns was just the most excited guy for him. And I think that's what's made our team really special. They're really happy for the success of their teammates. Our last question right here. Yes, sir. Greg Campy, I uh, just want to know your impressions of him. He's been at the same place a long time. He's coached a long time. Yeah. Are those things that you would want in your life? Would you want to be somebody that coaches 40 years or spends an inordinate amount of time at the same place? I mean, just your impressions on him and how that – is that the life you would want? Well, first of all, let's just start with the obvious. He's a tremendous coach. I mean, you you do not get the opportunity to stay anywhere for 40 years unless you know what you're doing. Um, that's not happening in today's time. Nobody stays. Nobody's going to get that opportunity because uh, – but he has done such a great job and um, probably – 
you know, I'll say this, probably one of the most underrated coaches, you know, in the country with what he's done. And, you know, you've seen he's, you know, put that program on the map. And, you know, I just – every, you know, two or three years you hear about Oakland and upsetting people. And, you know, I, I heard about him earlier this year. I think it was – and quote me if I'm wrong, correct me if I'm wrong. I think it was the Xavier win, um, pretty doggone good. And, you know, he knows what he's doing. He's put together a collection of really good players. And – you could tell people, his players enjoy playing for him. He runs a system that's really good, and, you know, they know what they're doing. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Thanks.